Buongiorno. Oggi Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to discuss a very important topic for our country. We will discuss the demographic issue, and so we will talk about the fact that Italy is performing very poorly in demographic development. We have a, an aging society. And then we'll also talk about the issue of migration, immigration. And so it's a very topical matter. Because it affects our, our future, uh, our production, our families, the social situation, the development of our cities. And so, in relation to the title of the meeting, You Are Good For Me, I think it applies very well to this issue. Let's think about the relationship that we have with the immigrants or with the elderly. We tend to ignore these people. And so I think it is very important to talk about this today, together with two very distinguished guests. We have here with us Giancarlo Bangiardo, full professor of demography at the University of Milano Bicocca. and Alessandro Rosina, professor of demography at the Catholic University of the Sacred Heart of Milan. They are two experts of demography because they study and research the way we can measure our population and the way our population grows. I will now give the floor to Mr. Blangiardo. Thank you all. I'm very glad to be here. And I will use some slides, as you can see. OK, so the title, The Strange Demography in Italy. Is there any future for us? So the the word strange. Why do we call it strange, this strange demography? The first thing I would like to talk about is to uh, give some remarks on this term, on this word, the word strange. So first of all, what does strange mean? Something strange is someone strange is who's different from what is usual, normal, or expected. So let's start by considering a normal demography. What would be the normal demography like? Number one rule of a normal demography is to respect the balance of the components of the so-called population equation. As you know, there is an initial population, birth and death, people and death rates, then there are immigrants and emigrants which compose the balance of migration, then natural balance plus total balance form the final population. For example, in Italian population over 150 years, we have the following numbers, the following data for our demography. We are now 60 million people. You can see the difference of the total balance. Uh, and we have almost 4 million of balance of migration. And that's not uh, such a big data. And this negative difference comes from the compensation with the, the Italian people who left Italy in the past. So there is a compensation of data, and we get the final data. Just out of curiosity, today there are the, the half 
we are 60 million people, 150 million babies have uh, born in Italy. So this is quite a normal trend in the long term. Another normal situation is the following one. You would not expect that in a normal population you could find these age pyramid, which are, mm, we have many babies uh, and less oldest people. There are few uh, aged people. This is the the picture of a normal Italian population. This belongs to 1950. There are two holes. First and Second World War had uh, brought to a decrease in the birth rate, as you can see, but that's, uh, that's totally normal because it uh, was related to the uh, global, the global war wars. So this is another normal situation. These are the people who have born during the first decade of the 20th century. And then you, you can see the following years, the different decades. And you can see that uh, even at the beginning we had 12 million people who were born. Then that number uh, had a sharp decrease until we get to 12, 11, to, I'm sorry, to 2011. So, but at some point the demography becomes, as we said, strange. And what are the symptoms of a demography which tends to be strange? Well, this happens, for example, a strange demography occurs when the components of the demographic trend deviate. And sometimes even rapidly. They are different from the normal evolution. Some examples, for example, a recent, uh, uh, a recent data, 2015, which was the record year because we had in Italy the lowest birth rate over 150 years over the whole history of uh, Italian country. As you can see, In 1917, we had 676,000 people who were born. And that's the first news, the first strange thing. The second one, dead people. In 2015, we reached, we had an unexpected death rate increase. There had been something similar in 2003 during the summer, but 2015 represented the, um, the biggest value in terms of death rate increase. So this is a second aspect. Uh, we can discuss the causes of that. Uh, I'm personally convinced of the fact that, apart from other explanations you can give it to, there, it, um, there is a, a weakening of health system in Italy that uh, quite affected this issue. Another example, for the first time from 1918, so we're talking about the end of the First World War, and there had been also a Spanish epidemic in that year that uh, brought to a lot of deaths. As you can see, we had the return of a significant drop in population growth after one century. So these are the signs of a strange demography that starts, yeah, that somehow starts to be strange. And these signs are important because people must be aware of what's happening and so that they can start asking themselves, what is the future for us? So, Okay, in this slide, as you can see, I tried to give you some outlook for 2016, for the first trimester. What will happen? Well, we have a good news, good news and bad news. First of all, in 2016, we have something reassuring because we will have minus 11% of deaths over the first trimester of 2016. Bad news and alarming data minus 3% of births, and the data might be even bigger. 
of course this is a first outlook so um, some changes might occur but these are the first data that confirm the trend of which we've been talking about the change in frequency of the components demographic trend is made up of has an impact in terms of the numbers of generations throughout their life cycle. As you can see, you can see some in this graph. Uh, we have a representation of the history of people. And there is a comparison between generations. Those who were born in 1941, you can see we had 900,000 people. And as you can see, as time goes by, the number of those people decreases. And the same holds true for the people who were born in 1951. As you can see, that number of people decreases as time goes by. And something different happens for those people who were born in 1961, because despite years pass by, there is no such big decrease in that number. Those people who were born in 1971, uh, we, we see the same trend, and the same holds true for the people who were born in 81, in 1981. As you can see, the, the number, the data does not decrease, but it starts increasing. So these signs describe a strange aspect of population. What's the explanation for this? It's not that people uh, somehow are created from scratch, but it's the migrant effect. So what has happened? New people arrived to Italy, people who weren't born in Italy. And as you can see in this graph, in the age pyramid, do you remember the, the, the one we saw before, the 1951? Well, this is the age pyramid of today's world, of today's Italy, I'm sorry. And it's quite different from the previous one. As you can see, the baby boom is represented in, during the 60s. And at the basis of the pyramid, since the birth rate has decreased, the basis is quite uh, little, as you can see. So this is the structural situation of Italy, of a country that must build its own future, and that is considering what will happen in the future. In this slide, the differences between 1950 and 2016. In 1950, we had a few older people and many babies, and today we have fewer nephews and babies and a lot of, of grandparents of old people. If you look uh, at the right on the top, you can see that uh, women who are aged 80 or more are the biggest data, the most significant data. So why do we talk about strange demography? Well, by strange we mean astonishing, surprising. Well, as you can see, uh, by comparing the two graphs, you, you can understand why I use that word, strange demography. So that was the current situation of Italy. Let's try and understand the causes of all this uh, situation. What are the reasons behind this strange demography? Of course, there are lots of causes. I will only tell you some of them. People get married and start a family later compared to the past. We will talk about how young people, uh, about young people's attitude later. Today, there are less couples and of course, this affects the demographic situation. The birth rate decreases, and families bring less children into the world. Maybe they want more children, but in the end, they, they don't do that. Important achievements in terms of longevity are reached. 
so people live longer and that's quite a good news and but obviously this causes a population aging and finally a spike in mobility flows can be observed and not only people coming to Italy but also people leaving Italy for example young Italian people leaving their country of origin this is quite normal today Italian migration is a quite important issue that we must consider some supporting data as you can see there is a generation comparison as the spawning behavior of women who were born in 1952 and in 1976 who might be considered the daughters of those women who were born in 1952 so with regards to those women who were born in 1952 12% with no children, 24% with no children in the ones in 1976. We're women with only one child, 23% and 27% is the one child model. Average number of children per, wo per woman 1.83, 1.38, though there was this change in the numbers, less than one child and a half per woman in the whole uh, spawning behavior of win women. And the average age of women at the time of the birth of the first child, of the firstborn, uh, is now 28. Average number of children per woman in the resident population per citizenship, as you can see, we have one point something and there is a difference between Italian and foreign women and it's good to um, point out that difference because we um, think that this birth rate decrease problem might be solved thanks to immigration and thanks to foreign women who will give birth to uh, more children compared to Italian women. Well, that's not true. As you can see, the average number of children per women with regards to foreign women um, underwent a decrease as well. So foreign women are somehow uh, adapting their spawning behavior to the one of the Italian women because they realize how uh, difficult it is uh, living here in Italy and, and they are somehow copying and adapting their behavior to the one of the Italian women. So it's a it's a widespread problem, both concerning Italian and um, concerning both Italian and foreign population. There is a different way to link maternity to the life choices of the couple. Mm. For example, in the past, people had children after marriage. And if we look at the current situation, there are a lot of young mothers and there are more uh, couples who have, chi who have children before getting married. So uh, as you can see, tradition um, has changed. I mean, the, the, mm, the trends are changed compared to Italian tradition. And let's look at the couple situation in Italy. As you can see here, we have all the data. We had a, a huge debate concerning the same-sex couples. And these are the official data. And we must consider that the traditional model of couple is still the mm, predominant model in our country because we have 7,000 same-sex couples in Italy um, by now and that's the official data by the uh, census of it, the Italian population so it's it's quite an official data and we are supposed to mm, rely on that data because that's official the consequences so 
we've just talked about the dynamics, the causes that brought to this strange demography. What uh, consequences are brought about by this strange demography? I have pointed out three uh, fields. Um, first of all, aging field. Of course, uh, population is aging. What does it mean? It means that uh, the old people, the elderly people are increasing in number. And of course, we, uh, we must consider a crisis of balances in terms of health and welfare as well and social security and so in a nutshell young people tend to invest more so if we want a future oriented country we have to support investment and young people well aging is not um, quite helpful in this sense. Think about Brexit, for example. The data, anal data analysis has pointed out that elderly people really played a significant role in the, uh, in the choice, in Great Britain choice. And if we have more elderly people, they will have a significant part in politics, for example. So the society has to uh, consider and take into account these changes. As for the workforce field, of course, there is a reduction in productivity. That's not quite bad, actually, because we, ha we have a lot of unemployed people, but we, we, must, uh, we must consider this aspect. There will be less job offer. And of course, we, uh, this means changing some social aspects and work aspects. As for migration, uh, Today we have five million people, five million foreign people resident in Italy. And if we consider irregular people, illegal people, we have 66 million, in a, out of a total of 60 million people. And the origin of the flows will change. For example, we will have more people coming from Africa and less from Europe. It's, it's, we must consider migration from Africa because to prevent people from leaving Africa, we should create uh, thousands of um, workplaces in Africa, and that's quite difficult. So more and more people will be coming to Italy from Africa. They migrate towards Europe, towards it's Italy, towards United States, etc. This is the reality. This is the current situation, and we need to face this. And I also remind you that uh, the presence of second generation uh, mm, foreign people is increasing. So people who were born, people who were born in Italy uh, to foreign parents and also people who got naturalized, which means they uh, acquired Italian citizenship. We had an increase in, uh, in the number of people who got Italian citizenship and this was thanks the low 91, 92 that in three years created 400,000 new citizens in Italy. So it's the situation of our country will be totally different from the current one. Some supporting data. I will provide you with two examples. The first one, grandparents. Today, 
we have 127,000 old people and in the future we will have 1 million 1 million 250,000 old people in to, in 2065 so it will be a huge number try and think what will happen there in that time also considering the pensions and the uh, and the help, the support from the state for all these people. So this is the reality, it's not sci-fi. That's the real situation. Another element to be considered is the turnover in the workforce. As you can see, there are, as you can see in the first graph, there are more people leaving than entering the workforce and I'll add another thing I'm calling uh, an issue here in Italy the imported aging in 2030 we will, in, we will have in Italy a lot of people who will uh, reach retirement age and who were not born in Italy because they were immigrants who came here for example when they were 20 or 25 and they started working when they were 30 or 40 and they did not make contribution until they were 40 for example so I'm talking about 200,000 people per year so this is a significant aspect, not quite important today, but we need to consider it for the future situation in Italy. So to conclude with, well, was it totally unforeseen? Didn't we know that already? Well, I confess to you that during the 70s, when I started working as a um, when I started analyzing statistical data. Well, some people were already talking about this situation, so it's not quite uh, totally new. And secondly, well, if that's not new at all, were there any attempts to fight against the factors determining this strange demography? As you can see, these are some prospects by the Institute of Statistics in Italy. As you can see, the line with white dots is the ISTAT pro is the are the prospects from ISTAT, and the second one is what really happened, and the third one is what really happened with foreign people. So, by comparing the two lines, we realized that what ISTAD predicted 20 years ago actually happened. So they told us, we knew it, and I, I have a lot of examples that prove that we were already aware of the situation. And I also want to tell you that I had written a book, a very old book actually, and in this book, I was talking about uh, issues such as work, education, social security, but also more specific issues such as, for example, capital transfer, considering the one-child situation in, family, in families, or, for example, the reorganization of military defense if you think about the 90s, the, change in the changes in consumption. Of course, old people have a different consuming trend compared to young people. New electors and elected people. If people who elect change, well, those who are elected in the end will change as well. So I was talking about this during the 90s and some colleagues of mine also supported my thesis. And I also add that 40 years ago, 
the um, relation on Italian population was published by Francesco Cossiga and that, re that um, document pointed out the importance of uh, knowledge and another thing in 2011 thanks to the uh, CHE project a little book was published uh, called The Demographic Change in this book everything that we're talking about that we've been talking about today was written so we are repeating things we're repeating issues that everybody is aware of actually and so to conclude we with we got the situation we described it and what's the therapy what's the solution everything is happening because there was a weakening of the family of its role from a demographic point of view so I don't know if you know that but uh, um, the national plan for family is something that exists here in Italy but nobody knows about that and it has not been approved since 2012 by the Italian uh, prime minister and and government and there are some so-called recipes in that plan for family and there are some solutions for helping and supporting the family and these ideas are quite supported and shared by all the parties but the problem is that these solutions are not quite used are still unknown so to conclude with we realized that our demography is strange and that there will be consequences these consequences will affect a change in balances and some problems will create some problems as well maybe not to us but to the future generations uh, they will have they will have to deal with this problem so it's time that someone starts and think about solutions starts thinking about solutions the solution cannot be the baby bonus and then we change idea and we do different things. We need to implement a serious and profound action, a coordinated action. We don't have anymore a minister for the family. The, something must be done and it's time to change the situation and try and face it. And I think this is the only way demography won't affect in a negative way the rest of society. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. After Mr. Blanjardi's words, I will now try and focus on what we can change, what we can do and improve in order to shape a better future so we need to understand what's not working in order to take the right measures in order to improve the situation and to s promote the development of our country for a better social economic and demographic uh, model And so it is very difficult to conceive a better future if we lose our young people. If we see our future as a house that we need to build, then we need the builders in order to build this house and the builders will be the young generations.
And the problem is that we are not investing in young people. So we're not investing in the builders that could be could build our house. As we all know, a society is able to grow and develop if it invests in the new generations from a quantitative and qualitative point of view. So there are fewer young people who are less motivated and marginalized, and this leads to a situation where Italy does not grow anymore and there is a lower social cohesion. And so we need to reverse this trend in order to develop as a society. As for the current situation, Italy is performing very poorly compared to the other countries, and so we need to tackle this uh, problem and take up the challenge very seriously. I will focus on France and Germany as well in order to analyze the two countries who could teach us something. From the point of view of the quantitative reduction of young people, the so-called aging of the society, when we talk about a the aging of the society, we think about an increase in the number of elderly people in society. But we never consider and we never manage to understand what really happens to the society when they lose their young people. And so as we see in the first chart, we have the line of France, the blue line, and then the dotted red line represents Italy. And so as you can see, they have a similar level The, the only difference lies in what's happened over the past 30 years. And so, as we can see, in Italy there are less young people. Compared to France. So in France, we have a very good generational balance and the number of children per woman is around two. So this is the average number of children, while in Italy the average number is one comma, one point something. And so we could say that France is performing very well in this because they have very strong family policies. They are very consistent over time, regardless of the political orientation of its government. And so it is easier to have children in France. But if we analyze the second chart, we see that we rank last in all of these countries for the age of our population. And so as we can see, there are fewer and fewer young people in Italy compared to the rest of the countries. But this is also a paradox. Because one can think that if we have fewer young people, and so we have fewer assets, these assets become more precious. And so following this logic, one would say that if 
we have fewer young people, young people would have more opportunities to find a job. But we are facing the paradox of having fewer young children, but of having also fewer investments. And so young children are faced with a very difficult situation. And so there is a quantitative and a qualitative decrease in the situation for young people in Italy. And so young people are not able to make best use of their skills. There are two categories of young people which have increased over the past few years. We have the NEET and the expats. NEET is an acronym which was created in the United Kingdom at the end of the last century. The United, the European Union adopted in order to talk about the squandering of skills of the new generations inside the Union. And it refers to people who are not engaged in education or employment or training. And so they are sort of marginalized. Italy ranks first in Europe with regards to the number of need. So we have the highest number of young people who are not in education, or employment, or training. And so we can see that there is something wrong in our system. And then we have also a lot of expats, meaning skilled young people who go abroad to work and to employ their own skills. And so young people are faced with two options. They can either stay in Italy, but it would be very difficult for them to find a good job, a job as qualified as they are, or they can go abroad. This is a situation of young people in Italy. It is very interesting to analyze the situation in Germany because they had a decrease in the birth rate, just like us. And so they are facing a similar situation in this regard. But unlike what we did, they decided to invest more in young people, in training, technical training, in um, research and development and innovation. And so now Germany has the lowest percentage of need. And they are one of the countries who most attract skilled young people from abroad. And so they are able to grow and develop very well. Here we can see the situation of need. In Italy, we have over 25%. Even before the economic crisis, we had quite a high percentage. And then the crisis was worsened this situation. But if we look at the situation in Germany in the chart on the left, we see that the economic crisis has not affected the situation in Germany. And so the crisis has been used as an excuse for this problem. Because as we can see, Germany has performed very well in tackling the situation, using young people as an asset to deal with the crisis. So the NEET group comprises both people who are looking for a job and people who are not looking for a job, unemployed people, and discouraged people, people who would like to get a job but they're not looking for it anymore. And so if we gather all of these um, categories, people who are looking for a job and people who are not looking for it anymore, 
we see that we have a chart here. And we see that Italy ranks last in uh, trying and promote young people and helping young people find a job, an adequate job. And this leads to a high level of mistrust amongst young people because they feel that they live in a situation where they find it very difficult to um, find a good job. And so they feel that they are not able to shape their own future. And this is one of the questions that we posed to young people for a report that we've carried out. And the question was, do you think it is likely that Italy over the next three years will be able to start growing again? And the people who said that, yes, I do think that it will be possible uh, is less than 30 percent. Then people who think that it, is, it will be not possible at all, the percentage is quite low. But if we focus on what the need answered, we see that people who think it is not likely account for over 28 percent, so a very high percentage. Of course, in this situation, people are not satisfied with their own life, and this situation also affects future projects. And this leads to a negative circus circle, which is very difficult to get out from. So as for the satisfac being satisfied about their own life, we see that need, so people who are not working are not satisfied at all about their life compared to people who are working, who have a job. And they feel that they regret their choices. And so they're not happy with what they're doing right now. So it is very difficult for for them to take the to make good choices about training or education or employment. And in the second chart we see that as we know in Italy there are a lot of young people who stay longer at their parents' house. And so we've confront compared over to 25 year olds and over 29 year olds we see that the older the people the stronger the trend is so usually older people tend to leave their house of their parents but this is not true for need As they get older, they stay at their parents' house. So they get older, but they really are not able to start their own life. And this leads to demotivation, as we said already. So we run the risk of having very high social costs, need will not represent an asset for our country, but just costs. 
and they will not feel as useful assets for the country. And of course, they will feel unsatisfied about their own life. And the more you stay in this situation, the longer you stay in this situation, the harder it will be to get out of the situation. And so there is also an increase in the mistrust in institutions. Um, this will compromise the sense of social belonging to society. And so it affects all aspects of social life. So it starts from an economic aspect, but it has very negative consequences on a personal point of view, not only from a professional point of view. And so the problem that we need to, the situation that we need to tackle is um, the transition period, the link between education and um, labor market. Because a lot of young people get lost in this transition. This, is, this transition could be described as a labyrinth, as a maze. So as they enter the maze, they feel they have lots of projects, lots of dreams that they want to turn into reality. They are very motivated and they are confident that they will find an adequate job. But then they run the risk of getting lost in trying to go through the maze. And this will also affect their personal life, the possibility of becoming adults, of growing on a personal level, of starting their adult life. And so let's now move on to a few figures to understand the situation of the Italian young people. We see that young people are still trying to do their best in this situation. And they do not recognize themselves as the so-called lost generation. They were also called choosy and they think that it is not like that. They do not feel like that. More than, rather than disillusioned, they are disoriented because they have lots of projects for their life, but we need to help them fully develop their own life. And rather than desperate, they are disoriented dotted around not because they just go abroad to find a better life they are lost because they feel they have a lot of energy that the country is not making best use of Italy is simply losing this energy instead of investing in it. So what do they need? How can we help them? So now we know 
we've acknowledged the importance of being able to adjust to the situation of having the importance of having an entrepreneurial spirit. So young people know that they need to motivate themselves in order to develop and adjust to the current situation. As for education, they need to have advanced skills, good trainings, and also they need to acquire the soft skills which are necessary. And then, as for the companies, they need adequate, adequate pays. They need to be well paid. In order to be recognized as an asset which could be useful for the company in order to increase their competitiveness and to the to the country they from the country they expect to have the opportunity to be able to develop their own future not just relying on social security and this is these elements are reflected in this slide in these two charts when asked what they think it is more useful in order to find a job they say that it is very important to be able to adjust to the situation and they believe that qualifications and academic accomplishments are very important but they are not essential so in relation to this in order to do this how could education help them find a job or find a better job? They think that it is important to improve their own knowledge and personal skills. And so young people believe that a good training it's something more than simply providing good skills. But rather than just finding a job, they want, they'd like to find the right position in their life. And so they need to receive the right tools in order to do this. And so, what they feel is really important is skills, um, the ability to establish good relationships, not just academic accomplishments. So the attitude is really important. And this is what should be further promoted by education, by the education system. Then what do they expect to find within the companies they work in. Young people expect to find self-realization, self-satisfaction in their job. So feeling that you are doing something good for yourself, which helps you improve as a person from a personal and professional point of view. And they are willing to be even underpaid at the beginning, provided that they're doing um, a good job which is in line with their skills. The problem is that in the long run, this could lead to demotivation. Because they might be doing a job they like, but they always complain about the pay they get. They are underpaid.
the wages are too low. compared to young people working abroad. And so this makes it very difficult for them to develop their own life, to achieve their own personal goals in their life. Because if you're underpaid, maybe you are not able to live your parents' house or you have to leave your house to go back to your parents' house because you cannot allow to, you cannot afford to pay your rent. And so all of this situation is, um, uh, has a negative impact on uh, the situation of young people. The our young people are less independent compared to other to people abroad and there is a high percentage of young people who left their parents house in order to be more independent and then eventually they understand that they cannot afford to pay your rent because they are underpaid and so they have to go back to their parents' house. And so there is a, a sense of failure, both on a professional and a personal point of view. As for the birth rate and the possibility of creating a family, having a child, We see from this data that there are young people have lots of projects. They want to create families. They want to have child, a child or many children, but they are not able to do so because the system is not supporting them. And this is where reflected in the number of children As we see in uh, the second chart, we've interviewed Italian young people compared with uh, young people from other countries. They've asked Italian young people, if you could have your ideal life, well paid, with a good job, etc., how many children would you like to have? If you compare the answers, the preferred number of children is even higher compared to the answers French or German young people gave. So on average, they would have as many children as French and German young people. But then if the, when we ask them, Taking into account all of the difficulties that you will have to face, how many children do you expect to have? Then we see that the number of children falls significantly. And so there is a, a very big gap between what they would like to do and what they will end up doing. And so there is a big gap between the ideal number, the expected number and even the number of children they end up having. So the actual number of children for Italian young people is even lower than the number of expected of children they expect to have realistically. While it is exactly the contrary for France the number of children they actually have is higher than the number of children they expect to have. So we see that the context in Italy is not helping young people at all. It creates many difficulties and young people are not able to turn their life projects into reality.
And so the situation is very different compared to the situation in Germany or in France, for example. So if Italian young people are facing more difficulties, it is not because they are less qualified, they have fewer skills, or they are less smart, or they do not want to do anything. But it is because they are faced with a very difficult context. And of course, that leads to demotivation. They are less, they have less motivation, and they feel more marginalized unless they decide to leave Italy and go abroad. And so the result is that we have more resigned and more passive young people because of the context, not because of a lack of skills or will. Then we've conducted another comparison with France and Germany. As we can see in this chart, we have in the vertical line, line the percentage of young people who are passively de depending on their parents. So under 30 year, year olds who are not doing anything at all and just, just depend on their parents. On the horizontal line, we have the number of young people of investments that the country is um, doing, is making in research and innovation. And so as we can see, the countries that are not willing to invest in the new generations are the countries which end up losing its young people, while countries which invest in young people because they consider them as an asset are able to keep their young people and to use them to make best use of them. And so in Italy, we can reverse this trend. And so if we invest in the new generations, we will be able to develop and start growing again in order to shape a better future. And so how do young people perceive themselves? Well, they think that they can be the real asset of the country, so 67% do acknowledge the fact that there, there are a lot of difficulties, but they think that we need to make effort, we need to stop complaining, and we need to take action in order to improve their own condition and the situation they live in. And so what do we need to do? We need to support this great attitude. Because if this gener new generation still believes in the possibility of growing again, of developing, we need to invest in this. We need to make best use of this. Because unless we do so, we will end up losing these assets. We need to help young people in order to become the real asset of this country, in order to help this country in their turn. Our young people want to be the driving force of our country because they know how they would like to shape their own future, but they not, do not feel supported in order to become the real asset, in order to 
enable the country to start growing again. And so we need to take up the challenge to build a good house by supporting our builders, who, namely the young generations. Thank you. Usually, everybody talks about constitutional reforms, and that's it. But even if we implement every kind of reform, but we don't, we do not talk about these issues. Well, nothing will happen. Nothing will change, because we have understood this morning that our country, that Italy, has one of the lowest demographic development in the w rate in the world. We have young people who seem without future and these problems have not quite cultural consequences but significant consequences in terms of work, health, pensions, life. There must be a proportion between old and young people but if young people have more and bigger problems than old people, then what's the solution? Our country, Italy, um, knows that efforts must be made. We, but at the same time, we risk ending up being a country where people do not get assistance anymore, where people won't be able to have any opportunities. So we must be realistic. Our problem in Italy is not only how to implement constitutional reforms. There are other problems, our radical problems, which are at the basis of economic difficulties. We can face economic difficulties throughout workforce of every kind through, uh, I'm sorry, through uh, human capital and through other assets. We need to realize this. We need to be aware of this. And I think this meeting is a great opportunity to understand this situation also thanks to uh, our conferences about the Italian Republic. I think that our speakers today, Blangiardo, Mr. Blangiardo and Mr. Rosina, they, this morning they, they were quite straightforward to us, but they were not disillusioned. They didn't tell us, ah, economic development is impossible. No, they provided us with a true analysis of the situation. They provided us with an hypothesis and with an option. There is a possibility for young people, a positive possibility. And when Rosina was talking about resignation, where he was talking about this, because people who go abroad are people who choose, who want a future for them. They're not people who we might call losers, because there is a possibility for a new positive way to face this solution. It only depends on the eyes that make efforts and make choices and choose not to have a negative destiny, a negative fate. They start working, they start building, they start committing themselves. So this is the first, the first important thing. We want to belong to, we want to make, to make part of this destiny. And it would be useful to use those political reforms which were never in that which have never been implemented especially in terms of uh, the family debate in Italy because we mustn't talk about the economic debate and that's it without talking about and facing the family issue the family situation and the family debate and because not talking about family is a sin 
So from a political point of view, we would like to start and talking about family again. And secondly, we really wish that politics might start supporting families because family is a quite important issue for everybody and we would like to have a new possibility of development by talking about family issue. Thank you.